Welcome back, I'm here with Alvaro, and we're gonna be talking about de provisioning devices over Bluetooth, which this is a de demo kind of bringing lots of different things together. What are some of the elements we're talking about here today, Alvaro? Yeah, indeed, there's a lot of elements here, but like the idea is to show an end-to-end -end scenario of you, uh, of you passing credentials to a device. So basically you have the IoT device, a mobile app, and also the live cloud to like um, manage the device and credentials. So yeah. there's those two high level pieces on this demo here. Yeah, and this is what people have to do when they're putting things into production, but maybe even they just want to make it easier to get one of their, you know, maybe they have an you know, NRF91 board or you're going to show an NRF9052 board and they just want to get the stuff onto there or ESP32, I guess, as well, or ESP2, ESP8266. Uh, like any kind of credentialing where you want to get onto the network, you usually need to pass something to it, uh, both for getting a Goliath, getting on your Wi-Fi network, all of that stuff. So uh, what are some of the elements that we're going to show in this diagram here? Uh, yeah, so thank you for sharing the diagram here. So yeah, the thing uh, here that is going to, that we are going to show first is the mobile app. So basically we build like an iOS app here, app here that can connect to the IoT device through BLE. Uh, and we are going to be using MCU Manager, which is kind of like a, a set of protocols and standards for, for communicating with IoT devices and Zephyr supports that uh, protocol. Uh, but also like we have uh, libraries that we can use on mobile apps to communicate using that protocol. Um, so that's the nice part. Uh, and then that mobile app is gonna talk with our IoT device, which as you already said, Chris, is an F52 here uh, and a ESP8266 as Wi-Fi modem, uh, acting as a Wi-Fi modem. Oh, it's closer now. Mm -hmm. So those two boards, the yep. NRF52 and Wi-Fi modem. Mm -hmm. uh, so this board is gonna be providing the uh, MCU manager server over BLE that the, the app can communicate and send configurations. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I'm not sure uh, if we're gonna show the app already, but like here the, the, the flow is gonna be like the device reads, uh, gets information, the, the mobile app gets information from the device. In this case, the device ID, we are using Zephyr APIs to get uh, some ID from the device. In this case, it's gonna read uh, NRF to like the internal chip ID. Mm -hmm. or we can get like this real hardware ID. Then we go to Goliath Cloud APIs and register that device like we asked. Like, create this device with this hardware ID. If it doesn't exist, if it exists, just returns the ID to us. And then after having the device created on Goliath, we go and create credentials for it. And then after having those credentials, we go back to the device and send those credentials to the device, like the PSK and uh, the PSK ID and PSK. This way the device can connect to Goliath uh, and like use our services like like DP state, uh, device firmware updates and those kind of things. Um, and also, as this device is using Wi-Fi, we also we can also send the Wi-Fi credentials over BLE, so the device can connect to our home network, for example. Right, right. And I, uh, one thing that people can do is if they follow some of the tutorials that we have on online, some of the individual things, they'll be typing these things in themselves or going to the console and putting these things in, getting Goliath credentials, and then putting that onto their device. But basically, you've created an app that kind of lives in between and does all this stuff for you. You're basically making a credentialing robot or equivalent <laughs> yeah exactly and it's a more yeah. realistic uh, flow of course like if you're building like yeah. a consumer facing application uh you're gonna do that like you need to remove the credentials from the firmware itself because your firmware needs to work on your whole fleet of devices and the credentials itself need to be uh set later when the device is going to be used like either being like the wi-fi credentials or the cloud credentials uh on our samples we have the credentials like like you said you have to type uh, encode the credentials, but it's just to make the getting started experience like simpler. Uh, but but like on a real world scenario, you have to like set those credentials later on the device uh, and on different set of devices, of course. Great. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's see how this is happening. Yeah. Let me share my phone screen here. I have a. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I had not seen this before. So you're able to yeah. actually share what's live on your phone. This is not yeah. like an app running on your computer. This is just the live view of your phone that you can now view. Exactly. Um, Pretty so cool. This is the iOS app here uh, that is using MCU Manager Library to uh, communicate with devices. And here is my NRF52 board running here with our settings sample. Like we already have on our uh, Zephyr SDK repo a sample for being able to pass credentials dynamically to the device. So I'm going to reset, reset the board here and you're going to see that this board is like failing to connect because it doesn't have credentials, cannot connect to Wi-Fi, so cannot do like anything interesting. 
So now uh, I'm gonna connect this device here. I called Goliath uh, 001 here. So I'm gonna connect. Mm -hmm. So you're so just to clarify, you are connecting t over Bluetooth to the device to the NRF52 that's on that board you have there. Exactly. Yeah, because it okay. started the MCU manager over BLE here in this case. Great. Uh, and now I created some buttons here. Of course, not looking like a, a final user application. Um, <laughs> that's yeah, that's but, cool. We don't we don't judge. This is uh, you know this is just showing the newest the newest and greatest. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So the first button here, disconnect, is going to connect to the device and ask for the device ID. We basically added uh, a setting over MCU Manager that gets the hardware ID. And it's the same thing that is going to return if I run this command here. Hardware info dev ID. So this is the device ID here. So if I Great. go here and click connect, uh, it's going to connect with the device and the device returns that ID here over BLE. So now I, I have a real hardware ID from the device. Right. And so this is a unique key that you can use to then go and basically encode uh, not in code, but even just to identify it later, right? So if you're looking up on the Galap console, you want to see, here's the hardware ID. I can say, oh, this is, I could even go and query all my devices if I wanted to and say, this is the one I'm looking at. Exactly. And this is what the this other button is going to do here in this Goliath device management section. This is going to try to find a device with that hardware ID, or if it doesn't exist, create it. So I'm going to click mm -hmm. here, find or create, and there you go. It's uh, Let's say that found or created. And here on our console, I can reload the page here and this new device appears here with that hardware ID. It's like um, magic. Yeah. <laughs> and also like, as this is a new device, we don't have credentials. I can also click on this other button here to create credentials for it. I use this recreate because if uh, any credential exists, right now I'm deleting all of them and recreating. Uh, so we have like only one credential. But you can improve that and do even like some credentials rotation. So for example, maybe you maintain like two or three set of credentials for each device and then like rotate that on your own device. Like maybe save two of them on the device and then like expire them after some time. So you can build your own logic on top of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to click here, create credentials, create device credentials, and I'm going to go here inside of the device. So we can see here that a credential was created with a PSK. And then let me set some refresh here. Uh, but here on the, the UI, uh, you're going to see that there are some forms here so I, that I can send some data to the device. So now I can send, for example, the PSK ID here over uh, BLE, also the PSK. And now I'm going to type also the Wi-Fi credentials. Like I want the device to connect to my Wi-Fi network. Right. And, and this I, is very true a of a lot of... Uh consumer level devices, you connect to it, and then you need to give it your local Wi-Fi credentials so that it can hook in and start sending higher higher bandwidth information without your phone around. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and now that I pass like all the credentials, like PSK ID, PSK, and Wi-Fi credentials, I can just send a command to reset my board. So also over MCU Manager, you can do that. And what, this is what this button is doing here. So yeah, if I click here, the device is gonna reboot now has like more uh, configurations. Uh, now it says that it's connected to the internet and all, now it's going to try to connect to Goliath and boom, here we can see data arriving on our console. <laughs> yes, the brand new auto refresh feature is in there and uh, it shows us yeah. it's coming through, huh? Exactly. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is like a more end-to-end -end scenario, like you're uh, creating like a brand new device, the device never connect to the cloud. So you go and create a device on our um, management uh, feature and also the credentials and that device can start sending data to it. Yeah, this is really great. And and just to, to be clear as well, so, so the app is talking to Goliath through the REST API, which yep. is basically like the, the web side or the cloud side, right? That's the, that's basically, that, that like you're showing here as well, it could also be talking through Goliath CTL or through a web page instead of a, instead of an app, but basically it's a view into the, into the Goliath ecosystem through that REST, through the REST API or the gRPC, gRPC API. Yep. Um, and basically it's just another view into that data. And then it's all communicating back to the NRF52 through the ESP32, ESP8266 over the co-app gateway. And that's the bottom, the bottom piece that you're showing there. Yeah, exactly. After the device have all the credentials and can connect to Wi-Fi, it can connect to our co-app gateway and use our services. Yeah. Um, this is, yeah, this is great. I mean, this is, like you said, this is something that every, 
company that has, has an app or needs to get stuff on, online, they all have to do this. And now it's just gotten so much easier using Goliath uh, and some of this example code that you've shown here. The uh, MCU manager as well, it seems like that's a very critical piece to, to kind of bootstrapping up to having something like this. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice that as we are, one thing to note here that I like to mention that as we are using like open standards, we, we can like cut some time, like having to redevelop some words. So for example, if you don't use MCU manager, maybe you have to define like the protocol, how the IoT device and the, the phone or the app is gonna talk to. So like, it's gonna talk JSON, Seabor, uh, what, what is gonna be the transport, BLE, serial, like you have to like build those things to receive and send those information. Uh, and that takes time. Like I already work on a bunch of projects that I had to do that and like was, was like a good chunk of time right yeah Yeah, exactly yeah totally Uh, so like by using those standards we we cut like a lot of development time by using that and even on the app side i didn't develop like the whole app like the nordic provides an example application on how to use uh the nrf uh, the mcu manager uh, libraries on android on ios so i just extended their app to like add communication with our uh, part with Goliath Cloud in this case, uh, right. and do this provisioning. So yeah, you can even have samples the, from the community. The rough amount of time it took you to get started with with this uh, and get this to completion, we can multiply it by a factor of three or so for for normal engineers. But for an engineer such as yourself, how long did it take you roughly to get this up and going? Yeah, I would say that like for this uh, demo here, it took me like roughly like a day of work, like uh, understanding like how the like the MCU manager libraries work on the mobile side, uh, understanding how MCU Manager works on Zephyr, but like maybe it was faster than that because we already have, uh, we had the settings uh, sample on our end that already did that work. So I, I didn't have to code anything on the Zephyr side, on the device side. Uh, so it was mostly like doing mobile development and integrating with our API to do that like dance of uh, information between both parts. But yeah. I would say like roughly a day. So so less than a week, we'll say as a broad yeah. term, less than a week to get up and running and have a, a way <laughs> to get your devices online if you were starting from nothing. But we will also be offering demos and uh, sample code for people to start from as well. So Alvaro, once again, thank you for showing a really awesome demo here. And uh, we'll have more demos with Goliath and provisioning devices and getting your IoT devices out into the world coming soon. Yep.